Hey there, fans of Cutting Records. We are going to do an experiment today, and I hope you'll come along for the ride and see if this actually works. We're going to take an RCA Selectivision video disc. The disc actually comes out of the plastic caddy that it originally arrived in, and we're going to place it on this record cutter and see if we can cut a record into it, an actual sound record. Now, there are already grooves on this record that are video grooves, that are playable in an RCA video disc player, but we're going to see if we can actually put grooves on top of those grooves and make sound undulations onto the disc. What you're looking at here is my Montgomery Ward Restored Record Cutter that I've put into this new exciting wood cabinet and I've since, well, since I've restored the unit, I've now put a new turntable on it. So I don't have the original Montgomery Ward record cutter turntable on it. Now I have this exciting Recordio unit on the top. If you've seen my videos, you know that I've modified the original one to record at 8, 16, and 33 RPM. But the motor wasn't quite powerful enough to drive the turntable at the proper speed. So I got this Recordio one and I've put it into my cabinet. And we're going to use that because it records at 78 RPM and it's got a gigantic motor on the bottom. The amazing thing is that it's 70 years old or somewhere in that vicinity and it still has the ability to, to turn this turntable without a lot of modification. So, I've taken the record cutting head out of my original Montgomery Ward unit and put it into this new unit here. So, the, re the, uh, the recording head is underneath here with the recording needle attached and this is not the original playback uh, tone arm either this is one out of a uh, uh, National Library service for the blind and physically handicapped tone arms very easily removed and remounted into this cabinet but it's a lightweight tone arm spring loaded so it gives you the ability to to adjust the tracking which is very nice now uh, this Cutting needle cuts at a wider groove, so it, it cuts at the, the same groove size that a 78 RPM disc would have been in the, uh, in the original days of 78 RPM discs. So uh, the selection that we're going to use to record is from a CD, and it's from my dad's band, the Ambassadors of Swing. It's going to be selection, uh, let's see, selection 18, the Days of Wine and Roses. And uh, the Ambassadors of Swing is a St. Louis-based uh, swing band, and uh, they actually can be hired for your uh, favorite event if you are in the St. Louis area. All right, so enough of that plug-in. Now we're going to go ahead and begin cutting our disc. So we're going to place the needle right on to the surface of the record. The record has been duct-taped to the turntable. That way it doesn't move. And I have my little Sony Walkman CD player over here that we're going to provide the music source. So I'm going to start spinning the disc like that. And I'm going to hit play on my CD player. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to mute the audio just for a second and see if we can uh, we can hear the actual uh, cutting needle vibrating. I'll pull the camera in just a little bit closer. You can see the uh, I forget the name of that stuff that comes off of there, but somebody told me one time that it's, there's a technical name for the thread of stuff that comes off of a disc when you're cutting it. The other thing that's really nice about RCA video discs, using them for this purpose, is they have a very smooth surface. So there's very little surface noise when you're, uh, when you're recutting a record like this. So you say, hey, it sounds like you've done this before. Yes, I have done this before. I actually made a video on YouTube of this exact process before. But I used a copyrighted song and YouTube all but wanted to have me arrested and put in jail for using that song. So that's why we're making a new version 
of this cutting process. And not only that, but we have this groovy new record cutter turntable to try out for this process as well. The only thing that's kind of a bummer about 78 is it uh, requires a lot of surface to record one song. I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way here. The other thing it was in my other video that I made is my camera was moving around quite a bit. It didn't have the uh, anti-shake properties of my iPhone 5S, which I'm using now to record. So uh, you get a little bit stabler picture quality as we're watching this. Is that, a, is that a word? Stabler? How about more stable? That'd probably be better. All right, let's get a sneak peek of what's going on with the audio here. <laughs> Unfortunately, my little CD player beeps every time you do something, so that beep is going to be translated right onto the disc. Alright, we're not going to clean the junk off the middle of it. Let's go ahead and go to the playback side, and I'm going to switch my machine over to the phono input. And let's see how we did. The Days of Wine and Roses by the Ambassadors of Swing. Here we go. Got to get to that lead-in groove here. I think you can hear it. There's a little bit of surface noise in the background. It almost sounds like crickets chirping or something. But it turned out relatively good. our little beep. So um, I've learned a couple of things about uh, making home recordings with record cutters. 
Um, almost all of the magic that's going to happen with uh, with a good quality recording is the quality of the recording needle that you have. And uh, the needle that I used, I happened to find on eBay, and it's this guy right here. It's a Walco Stellite cutting needle, and uh, you don't see them very often on uh, on eBay. So uh, that this is the little card that it came in, and. Uh, you know, of course, the, the surface quality, the smoothness of the product that you're cutting into. If you look on my channel, you'll see that I've made some really good uh, recordings on plastic food plates. And uh, Solo is the uh, manufacturer of these plates. And I've taken the bottom of them out and cut them out and, and actually made recordings on them. First time I did it, I didn't do very well. But then I uh, did another experiment with a red plate. And uh, that one turned out really nice. So, and that was not at 78 RPM either. It was it was right around 33 and a third. But uh, anyway, I appreciate you watching, and be sure and check out my channel for more experiments where we record on other things, including laser discs. And you can compare the quality of an RCA video disc versus recording audio onto a laser disc. And my original video that I restore the unit, I record onto a compact disc. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment, share this with a friend who might be an audio engineer or recording person or just somebody who's a hobbyist and enjoys this kind of stuff. Thank you for watching and have a great day.